Hello and welcome to this tutorial. In this session we are going to look at a very basic introduction to 3D modelling using Blender. Uh, this is aimed directly at beginners for people who've never touched or seen Blender before. So Blender is great for making 3D models for assets, uh, you can use it in popular game industries, Unity and Unreal. In this we're going to look at some very basic concepts of modelling, rigging and animation of both this session and future YouTube lessons uh, videos. Um, also we'll be looking at possibly how we can scale and prepare these models for 3D printing. Okay, um, so, like I said, Blender is completely free to download. That's what makes it popular. It's fantastic to use. We can make uh, static images, we can make animations, we can do 3D models. Um, you can download it at blender.org. Uh, obviously, you can't click on this link. Um, this link is simply to YouTube. Go and look at some Blender show reels and see what it can do. Okay, now Blender can seem very hard at first and at second and at third, but it's absolutely worth persevering because it's, you know, it's got a very steep learning curve, but it's, it's a really useful skill to have and very creative. Okay, so but like I said, both in this video, we're going to look at basic primitives, how to add some lights and cameras. In other videos, we'll be looking at mesh editing, adding textures and materials, and then some basic animation. Okay, um, the, the first thing really is, is adding primitive objects and, you know, don't think that this is too basic because it's really critical to get your head around how to move around Blender and how to add things. So we're going to look at primitive objects, moving, rotating and scaling, adding some simple colours and moving the camera so we can render the image from the direction we want. Uh, the key thing to factor in is Blender does use pretty much every key on the keyboard, including shift and every key on the keyboard and control and every key on the keyboard. So please be careful about what you click because if you clumsily click something it could have a you know, an undesired effect on Blender and you won't quite know how to undo it. And the only thing to do then is, is just start Blender up again. Um, I've been there, done that a lot of times. The other thing is it also uses the wheel a lot, both clicking it and scrolling it. Um, these are the shortcut keys I'll be using quite a lot through my use of Blender. Shift A to add objects, 1, 3 and 7 on the numeric keypad, which lets us change the view we're looking at. Uh, G to grab. R to rotate, S to scale, and then Shift D to duplicate. So it's not copy and paste, it's for duplicating. Okay, uh, when we're in Blender, again, these are the icons I'll be using quite a bit of the buttons. This little one for moving an object, this one for rotating an object, and this one for, for scaling, for resizing an object. And if you want to quickly change the view without the keypad, you can just press these little circles in the corner. That'll flick you around the front, side, and top views. Okay. Uh, a quick thing before we go into it about scale. Uh, Blender starts with a default cube. This cube is two meters, so it's two meters wide, high and deep. Uh, the reason I think this is really important is if you export a model you have made, say for example you put this into Unity and then put a VR headset on, this will be a two meter cube. So this is taller than, than I am. I'm six foot tall. Um, and I didn't realize that when I made my first VR game and it made some of my in-game game characters massive. I had some pistols in my hands that, again, were comically huge. Um, so, you, you know, you have to learn how to scale things appropriately for exporting purposes. Now, I found this image on Reddit a few years ago. I reached out to the guy, said how much I liked it, could I use it in one of my lessons? And he said, yep, no problem, I'll put a link below. Um, but what I want to try and do is, is, is recreate something similar to this, a simple box man. Um, so we're just going to experiment with, with putting cubes in, moving and scaling to have got something similar. Mine will not be as good as this. So we're going to jump over into Blender. Uh, we've got the splash screen, so I'm just going to click for that to go away. And there we go, we've got the default cube. Um, now like I said, we can see the dimensions. It's two meters. It's telling us right there. So I could resize it now, uh, but I'm not going to. And in each one of these little squares represents a one meter square. So I'm just going to come into the front view by pressing one. So I'm now in the front, and it's really important to not model while you're looking from an angle. Um, so if you notice that, I'm just using the wheel mouse, the middle mouse button, to, to sort of rotate around. And I can then use it to scroll in and out, so I can zoom in and out. I can also press shift and wheel mouse to sort of move the screen left and right. So I suggest if you've not used Blender before, pause this video now and just go and get comfortable with, with kind of moving in and around. It's really important that you are happy doing that. Okay, so I'm going to come into front view. That's what going to, is going to be my kind of my head. Um, so I'm just going to use the blue arrow to, just to drag it up a little bit. 
and I want another box to act as the body. So again, I'm coming back into front view. I do this a lot, flick inside view to see how it's looking, then flip back to front view. Um, I'm going to go onto the add menu, mesh, cube. So I've now got another cube. Um, now I did go onto the add menu, mesh, cube. I could have just pressed shift A to bring up the same menu. Um, so this is going to be the body. So if I just come back into front view, I'm going to click on my scale tool. Uh, make this just a little bit wider than the head, obviously a little bit taller for the for the body, and just move it down a little bit. Okay, so it's a bit thin there. So again, I'm going to click back on the scale tool. I should really come into the side view for this. There we go. I've got a bit of a body. Okay, so I'm now going to add another cube. So Shift A, mesh cube. This is going to be one of the arms. So I'm just going to make it a bit thinner, move it over a little bit, move it up a little bit. You'll see other people on YouTube in Blender going extremely fast at this. They've just got a lot of experience. So that should be sort of one of the arms. Again, I'm just going to play about a little bit more, moving it over a bit, uh, coming to the side view. And now I'm going to use the rotate tool. Now if I come into the side view, it, it's on the other side. I'm going to press Control and 3. So I'm now on the other side, the, the right hand side of it. Now if you notice when I rotate, it's rotating around the middle of the cube, so I'm going to have to move it over again to pretend where the shoulder is. Okay, um, And because I'm happy with that arm for now, I'm going to press Shift and D to duplicate. So I'm just clicked it, clicked it down so it's locked in position, and now I can move it over to this side. So now I've got my little box man with very short arms, um, and I'm now going to add some legs doing the same thing again. I'm going to Shift A to add a cube, I'm going to grab G to grab move down, I'm going to scale it, so I'm pressing S to scale, going to come back onto my scale tool here, move the leg up a little bit, move it round. I'm going to shift D to duplicate that, although I forgot to do something. Looks okay from this view, but from the side view, okay, actually that's not too bad. That worked out all right. Okay, it's not fantastic, but I have now a little box man. Uh, obviously it's this default sort of grey colour. I want to be a cardboard box, so I'm going to just give it a, a bit, bit of colour to it. So I'm going to come over this side, I'm going to click on the material. Um, I'm going to come down to where it says base colour and just click on the dot. Um, sorry, just click on the white area. Okay, it's not doing that, why not? There we go, that's what I wanted. I don't know, don't, don't know why it didn't work before. I'm just going to find sort of a, a light kind of brown colour, just moving the slider around a little bit. I mean, if you know your colours, you can also click into RGB and type your numbers in. But I'll choose the colour wheel, that'll do. Now, if you notice, nothing's changed because I'm basically in this render view up here. And if I just go, that view, I've got wireframe, I've got grey, I click on there, and I've now got the brown colour. And um, this has now gone on to sort of the viewport uh, shading. So I'm going to click on the other ones. Um, I don't need to click new, I can just click the little arrow and I can choose the same material. Um, and just keep on going until it's all coloured in. Uh, the reason for using the same colour over and over rather than creating new ones is if I suddenly think, ah, oh, I don't like that one, I want to change it, I want it to be uh, more, I don't know, blue. I can just click on this material um, and I can change it and it should change all of them. There we go, it's changing all of them. Also, I should really rename this tutorial, uh, this, sorry, not tutorial, this colour. Um, just be, yeah, it makes it easy to see later and it also makes it more compatible if you put it into Unity later on. Okay, so I've now got that. I'm not actually happy with that colour. Um, Move down a bit. So there we go, I've now got my little box man, and that's what I'd like you to do is go and try and create your own little box man, be more creative, add more boxes, add more limbs, change the scaling a little bit. Um, and once you've done that, we can now render this image. If I press F12, it renders the image, and it's like, well, that doesn't look quite right, it's because the camera's there. This is what the camera's seeing. If I just carefully come up here and just pull this window out. That's what the camera's in. I've pressed, so I pressed zero to see what the camera can see. And now I come back into this view, um, and I'm going to press seven. Seven takes me to the top view. And now I can move this camera around, just like I would one of the objects. I'm pressing G to grab. I'm going to move the camera around a little bit. I'm going to come to the front view. Um, I'm going to play about so I can rotate the camera. I'm still not happy too much with that. So I'm just going to zoom out, pull the camera out a little bit. Pull the camera up. OK. So you sort of see where that's going now, the camera's in view, if I press F12 now, that's where it's viewing from. Um, now this is just a pre-render, it's not saved, if I want to save this image, I go on image and save. 
Um, so the, the final step of this really is to maybe move the light. You could see that it was um, obviously only shadow just there. But if we look carefully, we can see this little circle thing here. And again, I'm going to, going to come to the top view. I'm going to press G to grab, and I can move the light around. Now, I can also, just make this a bit wider, change this to that setting. This is like how it will look when it is rendered. So if I move this light around, we should see it's changing. Okay, so the thing to do here is just play about and see what you're happy with. Uh, we could also give the light a bit of colour. You know, change whether it's warm, whether it's cold, you know, again, it's totally up to you. The important thing here is, is to play, experiment a little bit. You know, I could add a, add a second light by duplicating, Shift D to duplicate, put another light, I could change the colour of this light a little bit, I could change how bright it is. In fact, I'm just going to type up five minutes instead. And again, the key thing is, is to play, experiment, add more boxes, add a box for the ground, try change the colours a bit, add more lights. Um, and when you're ready, press F12, render your image and save it. Okay, I shall see you in the next tutorial.